Former hostage hunger strikes to push for release of hostages held by Iran. On January 16th, Barry Rosen, a former U.S. diplomat who was among the 52 Americans who were held hostage from 1979 to 1981 after the attack on the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, announced his plan to conduct a hunger strike. The hunger strike coincides with the 41-year anniversary of his release from captivity. To conduct his protest, the 77-year-old flew to Vienna, Austria, where, where the Iranian nuclear deal negotiations are being held. He stated, quote, my message is simple, no deal with Iran unless the hostages are free, referring to the many foreigners and Iranian dual nationals that are falsely charged with, uh, with espionage and imprisoned by Iran to be used by the regime as political bargaining chips on the world stage while their health deteriorates. Rosen ended his uh, five day hunger strike. Uh, sorry, he Rosen ended his hunger strike after five days on January 23rd upon the insistence of his family and the United States special envoy to Iran. Others took up uh, the hunger strike on his behalf, including two hostages currently imprisoned by the Iranian regime. Uh, Anushe uh, Anshuri and Kamran Gaderi. Yeah, so this is, so people know about the hostage situation right after, like, closely after the Islamic Revolution in Iran, right? So the embassy was taken over by a bunch of students, okay? Um, and yeah, the, led by this woman called Masume Eftekar. I think she changed her name now, but now she's like a high official in Iran. And he claims that she was she was very abusive to him when he was a so this man was one of the um, staff at the embassy that was taken hostage by the by the students, right? By the way, the the whole the embassy of Iran being uh, taken hostage was not a plan by Khomeini or the people that, that were in charge at that point, right? The students took over the embassy and Khomeini decided like, okay, I approve. Like that was like a thing that happened after. And it's possible that Iran and United States had a very friendly, like could have had like a relationship right now with each other if this hostage, if the embassy was never taken over, right? Like it wasn't necessarily going to be like completely aggressive against the United States, but because they decided like, okay, I guess like there's the popular support for taking over the embassy and we could want to take, this is, seems to be in our favor. Like if we like invest in this, like, like lean into it basically, <laughs> right. And just use it as a propaganda. And now like all the, all the, all the economic devastation that, um, not all of it, but most of the economic devastation that Iran is, experiencing today is because of this stupid like uh, this masume of Tekara and the other students who like decided to attack the embassy like iran could have had like a, a international relationship and economic trade with the whole world right now if this embassy takeover never happened right in 1979 but like yeah i never wondered like what happened to those hostages right like i never like looked up to see what where these people are at but now well, here's one of them and like I was li listening to his interview with Masi Ali Najat, he speaks Persian. Yeah, like how it's it's rusty, he but he you can tell he understands. Yeah, and he speaks it. it was like, and he's proud of it too, right? And he's like, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. I mean, if you're held <laughs> if you're held captive in Iran for over a year, you better hope you can understand what's going on. I mean, he was also I mean, like a was, diplomat, so you're more. Yeah, they, they send I mean, he was in Iran. Before he was taken hostage, like I'm, like you know, so and he didn't forget, and he cares about. It. He seems like to care about Iran enough, even though he was like taken hostage there. He, like this is a really bad experience. <laughs> he had really bad experience in Iran, but he's like now going on hunger strike for the people of Iran. Is like, yeah, I mean, by the way, like it's so insane. Like I don't know if people understand. Like the Islamic Republic of Iran, like openly just takes people hostage as negotiation tech negotiation tactics, right? Like, like imagine openly, openly. when imagine when your like, presidential candidates are proposing that as an economic strategy, you fall yeah. in the coop. 
Yeah, there was one of yeah, you're right. There was one of the presidential candidates who was like, hey, we could solve all the economic problems in Iran by just taking this many Americans hostage and just asking for money. <laughs> They're like, that would solve all our problems. They're like, this was a serious suggestion by one of the presidential candidates. In a it's presidential debate. Yeah, in a presidential debate. Well, I mean, no, in a presidential debate, the, the, his opponent brought it up as a way to embarrass him. He didn't bring it up. But, oh, oh no, no! But then he owned it. He's like, "Well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a soldier. I'm trained to think yeah. the way a soldier yeah. thinks, and this is what we got to do." I was <laughs> like, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> yeah, he was. He doubled down. Um, but, but, damn but, it, guys! By the way, the hostages that they take are dual citizens, right? The hostages Not that they're taking. Yeah, but a lot of them are dual citizens, meaning like, and Susanna, I don't think you know this. Some of them are pro regime. I mean, until they were taken hostage, like they're like they don't even discriminate. They're like, I'm "Sorry, I know you like us, but you have a U.S. citizenship, and we need you." <laughs> and we need you. Like, like imagine if you're a dual citizen of United States and Iran, and you're also pro regime, and they're like taking you, like, "Oh, you're a, you're an Israeli spy. We're gonna arrest you." And you're like, guys, what? I'm one of you. One of, you. Like, <laughs> one of you. What are you doing to me? But they don't discriminate. They're like, your US citizenship is so valuable to us. We're going to take you hostage, right? It's unbelievable. Like, and it shows how little they value their own citizens, right? Because they know that United States values its citizens, or UK, or United States, or these other countries, they value their citizens. So that they could, these people could be used as negotiation tactics, and they know how little they care about the fact that these are Iranian citizens because they arrest them, not caring about them, knowing that those other people care for them, <laughs> even if they're pro regime, they care for them enough because they're American citizens to fight for them. It's unbelievable. It's un insane. Um, I mean, imagine if somebody was like, uh, right now, like right now, United States is in conflict with Russia. Okay. Imagine somebody who had the dual citizenship of, you know, was an American and Russian, right? Dual citizenship of United States and Russia, right? And United States was like, we're just going to arrest you. And like, you're on American soil. We're going to arrest you as a negotiation tactic against Putin, right? Well, like, that's what the Islamic Republic of Iran does openly so many times, right? Um, and this is the country, like, the, the, this is the regime that we're dealing with. And, and imagine the people who are defending the Islamic Republic of Iran against the United States as if this is a normal country where it takes its own citizens hostage against other regimes. Like, unbelievable. Oh, my God. It makes me think of that Mohammed Morandi guy who's the shill that's always on Al Jazeera yeah. in, like, the gray zone. And he's always talking about how Iran clearly has the moral upper hand, like, clearly has the moral superiority. It just makes... And then I think of this stuff. It makes me want to rip my hair out. But um, I would really mm. like to watch this quick video that he posted when he was first announced it. This, this one? Yeah. It's only, like, two minutes. Okay. Let me know if you have an idea. Wait. Hi, I'm Barry Rosen, a survivor of the Iran hostage crisis, and this week marks the 41st anniversary of my release from captivity. But the hostage crisis hasn't ended for many others, Americans and Westerners, who are now being held as bargaining chips in Iran. There are at least two dozen of them. It's clear to me that the release of the hostages can only take place if the United States and countries like the United States pressure Iran. To that end, I am traveling to Vienna, Austria this Tuesday, where the US and its allies are holding negotiations with Iran over its nuclear program. And there in Vienna, I will be staging my hunger strike. Now, my message is simple. No deal with Iran unless the hostages are free. And this message is a message I will deliver both to the Iranian and to the American delegations in Vienna. Yes, I will be speaking truth to Iran. And yes, while I am nervous about my health at this age, I think what I'm doing is the right thing 
for the hostages and their family. So while I'm in Vienna on my hunger strike, I'm going to post videos. I would like your support for the hostages and their families. I'd like you to go to hashtag free the hostages. The more voices we have, the stronger we'll get. Let's go and free them now. Thank you very, very much. So I wanted to cover this news because I've been following what his his activity on Twitter. You can um, follow him at at brosen1501 if you want to check out what he's up to. Because he's um, he like instantly just became like a hero and role model for me. Um, I think he gets a lot more attention on this issue because it's him. He's a former hostage taking up this mantle. And um, I've been talking a lot of my friends uh, to a lot of my friends from Iran about this and what he's doing. And it means a lot to them. Um, and I think he's really admirable. I, I really, he just seems like a sweetheart. He's very soft spoken. Um, he was very effective in meeting with very um, high level government officials to talk about this issue. And on the um, shortly after he ended his hunger strike, the U.S. Special Envoy to Iran basically said that it's unlikely that they will reach a nuclear agreement without the release specifically of the U.S. hostages. Um, and uh, there's been communication to Barry from current hostages about how much they appreciate him and it was only partially because his family and also the family of current hostages were so worried about him because he's 77 years old doing this that he agreed to stop um so i was watching videos that he's posted on his w flight back to the united states from austria and you can tell like how exhausted he was and the effect this had on his body and he it's so sweet. He was like, I, um, I had to, you know, end my hunger strike, but I haven't forgotten you guys and I'm not going to forget you guys. So please keep following this issue. Use hashtag free the hostages and we need to demand the release of these people. Um, so I wanted to highlight him because I think he's doing something really amazing. Yeah, you know, I saw Robert Mulley, which is like the lead guy when it comes to the negotiations from the U.S. side from Iran, uh, uh, with negotiations with Iran. I saw him announcing, like, this is what I saw, right? Uh, I don't know if it was response to in, to this. I think it was in response to that. Uh, it was. To the hunger strike. Look yeah, at so the Robert... report from Al Jazeera. He's sitting next to um, Barry Rosen at the table. Right. So this guy had a huge because Robert Mulley is the lead negotiator with of the just the you know to of the deal the nuclear deal with Iran, and he came out and said U.S. unlikely to return to JCPOA while Iran holds American hostages. So this man had a huge impact. Like you can't get higher than this when it comes to the negotiations with Iran, guys. We're talking about the if theocracy getting access to nuclear weapons or not, right? Um, and this man with one hunger strike had uh, made his already had an influence in the direction of the talks and actually i saw also a response from um Racy's administration spokesperson coming uh responding to this and saying that we would be open to talking about uh, prisoner exchange or stuff like that right so they also responded that given but they, they also were complaining about that this can be part of the negotiations, but they also responded that they might respond to that. They might like, if that is a, if that becomes a condition, which makes a lot of uh, hardliners in Iran angry because racist administration is moving, becoming softer and softer uh, when it comes to the, the demands as they go on. And this is a major complaint that hardliners had about Rouhani's administration you know, and Khamenei just recently came out and said, like, hey, if we negotiate with our enemies, that doesn't mean we're weak or something. And people feel like that. I think that was like a green light with Khamenei because he, he had 
himself had said that there is no negotiation with the enemy, right? That's why there's no direct talks between Iran and the United States. Um, Iran, the Iranian negotiators and the Americans are never seen in the same room together. The Americans always have to be in a different hotel because Khamenei declared that, right? And then Khamenei apparently is saying that the deal is not going anywhere right now, came out and said that, guys, we're not, we're not pathetically weak if we actually, like, sometimes you need to talk to your enemies. And a lot of people saw that as a major uh, green light yeah. in combinations indirectly to the negotiators. And the foreign minister of Iran just recently came out and said, like, we're open to directly talking to Americans if that's what's necessarily needed to get the deal done. And a lot of hardliners are losing their mind over this. Like the, the hardliner newspapers came out like, what are you talking about? We kicked that. We were so anti Rouhani's administration because of the way you guys are talking. Like, this is why we elected you because you were supposed to be tougher against Americans. Right. So this is becoming a major like um, internal fight within the hardliners in Iran right now. Right. But people are like, but the Khamenei is not us. He gave us the green light. Like, you, you know, like he gave us. So it's a, yeah, you know, it's a, We'll see. They're, they're desperate. Like, they're desperate. Um, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, that was very interesting. I didn't know these two things were related. I saw them separately, and now I see that they have something to do with each other. Amazing. This guy is like, a, this guy just single handedly just changed the direction of the negotiation just with like, like a, a few days of hunger strikes. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. Um, when, when, the statements from uh, the special envoy Robert Malley are very clear that any negotiations from hostages hostages versus the JCPOA are separate. Like they are, they repeatedly emphasize that constantly because political reasons. Um, but now they're like, yeah, you got to give us our citizens back before we got to continue. <laughs> they're like, they're separate, I mean but they're happening in tandem. Okay. Yeah, they're like it's they're like it's not part of a negotiation, but it's hard for us to imagine us having a deal with Iran while they're holding our citizens hostage. But it's not part of the negotiation, <laughs> so it's kind of like double speak. I don't know, but I mean, it does look pathetic. Like it is pretty pathetic for the United States to be like, ah, oh, yeah, like this country that is basically like. You would think like when somebody, a country just takes their citizens hostage willy-nilly, like some people would see that as a declaration of war. <laughs> or attempting but, to kidnap your own citizens on American soil within the contiguous right. United States? Exactly. Like the, some, some people like, you know, a, a lot of people are like, oh, United States is being too aggressive. and But they're completely like acting like nothing happened because they don't want to escalate things. But when a country sends somebody on your soil to kidnap one of your citizens, you know, other countries would see that as a declaration of war. But you know, it's just like, shh, like that, nothing happens. <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of a deal. And then Kyle goes here like, oh, you guys are being imperialist and being aggressive. Like, you're being passive. You're being, they, they tried to take, they, what is this? Like. I don't, you know, if you were trying to be like even average, not even aggressive, you'd be like, you're forcing us to declare war on you. Like you're you're on our soil kidnapping our citizen. Like how is this not a declaration of war? I don't understand. D is yeah. saying, here is where we reiterate oh. that one person can make a difference, which I think is a very good point, D. Yeah. That's actually um, a very good place. So, yeah. And then random yeah, Buddhist all... guys just saying eagle screeching intensifies. <laughs> of course, all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, and then blank name is saying, um, what has Kyle said about that? I'm assuming referring to the attempted kidnapping of Miss yeah. Elin and John. I don't think he said anything about it. I, actually, we don't know because last time I said he he didn't say anything about this. Some some people in the live chat pointed out that he actually did, so he might have. So we, let's be careful with that. <laughs> so we don't know. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find 
anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.